It has been called the world's greatest piggyback ride, a space shuttle atop a Boeing 747 jet aircraft. But this is no ordinary 747. evokes feelings of progress, elegance, and achievement. To understand how the shuttle carrier aircraft came to be, you must understand the shuttle itself. It was America's first reusable spacecraft. At the end of a space mission, the shuttle would re-enter The shuttle became a renowned and iconic space vehicle. The SCA allowed those of us on the Earth to share that excitement when it served its role as a shuttle taxi. Mission by mission, SCA crews eagerly listened for word if the shuttle would have to land somewhere other than Florida. We start getting excited when we hear that uh, the weather is bad in, in Florida. Those few of us uh, that fly this airplane, um, 
like like bad weather in Florida. <laughs> so <laughs> we get a chance to, to do our job. So um, as soon as we know that the shuttle is, is en route to, to California, that's when we start uh, getting involved with the shuttle ferry team. So basically the shuttles are, are brought into the mate, uh, D-Mate facility and they're, they're hoisted up and the shuttle carrier craft, the 747, is moved under the shuttle and then uh, the, the attachments are made. The shuttle and its cargo can weigh anywhere from 160,000 to 220,000 pounds. To lift and fly with that much weight on its back, the SCA had some special modifications that made it unlike any other jetliner. Most noticeable were vertical fins mounted on the tail. The shuttle caused air turbulence, and the fins brought back stability to the flight. Other than the fins, it might appear this was an ordinary jumbo jet. But as SCA flight engineer Henry Taylor can tell you, there were some very important differences between a regular 747 and a shuttle carrier aircraft. We're here inside the main cabin of the shuttle carrier aircraft. As you can see, there's no insulation, no paneling. All the lavatories and galleys have been removed to save weight. Above me, and this one, that are used to provide support for the orbiter attach points. The attach points for the shuttle carrier aircraft are in the same location that the orbiter is attached to the external tank for launch. The aft port section of the airplane, there's two struts with what we call balls, and those go up inside the orbiter. In the front, there's a small little tripod adapter fitting that mounts to the structure that's been added to the shuttle carrier aircraft. Somebody uh, made kind of a joke, although it's, it's, it's relevant, for, by the aft attach points, it says, attach orbiter here, note, black side down, which of course the black for the tie also. It's kind of a joke, make sure somebody doesn't put it on the upside down. Although the plane itself had all the necessary technical requirements for a safe flight, the highly skilled crew monitored the systems carefully and experienced a different type of ride. From a pilot standpoint, there's a, there's a long wait. When, when, when the power's pushed up, you don't really realize the time that, that you're going to be on the runway before, before rotating the airplane into the air. So there's a big, big wait, and that, that's the big thing that was impressed upon me, I think, during my first uh, uh, shuttle fair. As the shuttle program ended, the SCA had one final mission. Deliver the shuttle's enterprise, discovery, and endeavor to their respective museums across the United States, for one last time, people got to see the unique vision of spacecraft and aircraft joined in flight. And with that, the SCA with the shuttle was not seen in the sky again. But it will always remind us of a bold age of determination and invention. When the orbiter is on top of the SCA, it just creates so much interest because it's such a unique sight that People come out by the thousands to see us wherever we stop, to come see this very unique combination. People appreciate and, and people respond to things like that, the American ingenuity and, and American pride.